As we build up to our Creative Economy edition of Match Mentor taking place on Saturday 29th April, we've been speaking to some of the mentors that will be attending the event, hearing more about what they will be sharing at the event. We recently got to speak to one of the finest makeup artists in Africa, Mudoni Njoba, who shared with us how she came into makeup artistry. She was so warm and welcoming and invited us into her creative space where she shared a lot about some of the difficulties in choosing a creative career, especially in the society that we live in. She spoke about the importance of education in, even in creative careers where a lot of people assume that you wouldn't need one. She also spoke to us about how to monetize your creative career and took us through the importance of having a digital footprint as a creative or as an artist. We can't wait to see Mudoni at the event. Here's what she shared with us. Today we are engaging with one of Kenya's finest makeup artists. We're here today at her creative space where she loves to create and, and make people look beautiful and feel beautiful. Definitely. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us <laughs> or for allowing us into your space rather. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Okay, so we can start with what do you do and why do you do it? Oh wow, okay. Straight into it. So I'm a makeup artist. Um, I've always wanted to be a makeup artist since I was early as I can remember, I was probably nine years old. Uh, it hasn't been easy <laughs> getting to earn this title, obviously. Um, being raised in Kenya, in Africa, where it's, you know, there's certain jobs that win the approval of the parents and others that don't. So basically, um, I went off to university, got my degree, came home, interned a little bit as a makeup artist. And then I had to get into full-time employment because I got pregnant with my son. So at that point, I needed something that was stable in terms of financially. Um, but basically, it has been a passion since I was a child. I used to see my mom dressed up, done up in makeup. She used to work for the airlines. Yeah. So that really got my attention. And the biggest thing was how much confidence she got once she was all done up. And I just thought, you know, if I could have that feeling and give that feeling to other women, that would be amazing. Um, I often talk about how in high school I was, you know, the chubby kid who had insecurities, but a lot of people were like, oh, but you have a really pretty face. So I used to do my makeup up and it got the attention and I, it made me feel good. I'm not saying makeup is the only thing that can make you feel good about yourself. I'm just saying that it was a huge component to that. Yeah. So I wanted to share that feeling with other women. Yeah. Yeah. You just mentioned uh, parental approval. Yes. And I guess it stems from misconceptions about what you know what it means to again be a makeup artist, mm -hmm. for example. So, what have you found as some of the, the, the misconceptions about being a makeup artist? Oh, that was. Let me tell you, it was so difficult coming from. I used to work at Center Investment. Uh -huh. Okay. Anybody in Nairobi <laughs> or in Kenya right now, you know Center. You know the yeah. success it has, how yeah. big it is, yeah. and getting your foot in that door is really really tough so I was working there for two years I was the um, PA the first day to the CEO and then uh, the title was now turned to executive assistant to the CEO which was brilliant because I got to learn and work in different aspects from branding they were rebranding at one point uh, I went back to school to do HR so I did some dabble in HR I'm very passionate about giving back to society through charity so I manage the CSR budgets so you can imagine as I'm explaining all this you're like wow 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 it sounds like the you know amazing corporate job with the benefits yeah. the good pay yeah. so you can imagine leaving all that behind to come and say you're a makeup artist in Kenya like you've just left everything everyone is <laughs> dreaming. <laughs> dreaming of yeah. to being a makeup artist something that you know is a job title that a lot of people thought is the is for people who weren't educated, people who had not gone to school, mm -hmm. people who, you know, dropped out, so they just, you know, became a beautician. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm working at a salon. Yeah. So I actually internally battled a lot the first year, two years, with the title itself. Like I felt almost afraid. I wanted to tell people that I was proud of being a makeup artist, but also it was, you know, explaining now to them uh, when they give you that dismissive look like, oh yeah, okay, fine, so she's, you know, artist, not educated, not anything. Yeah. Um, and a real struggle, you know, that is when you realize how much people value your title and mm -hmm. affiliate you with that title yeah. and how much it then becomes a part of you mm -hmm. that even communicating with others becomes, you know, difficult. Yeah. And of course all the benefits went away, so I didn't have steady income, I didn't have money, I didn't, 
you know, I didn't have a support system mm -hmm. financially. Mm -hmm. So it was a tough first two, three years. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that is when I learned what it means to be passionate about something. Yeah. Um, and the first lesson I ever got about being passionate about anything was two people I can say really made an impact in my life. First, my father, because of how much he was so passionate about giving us a life that he never had, you know? Mm -hmm. I can say my mom and dad, actually, because they were really pretty influential in, in that. Um, second was my brother. He's been doing motocross since he was five years old, and now he's a motorsports engineer building engines for Jaguar and Audi and all not, and he's only 28 years old. Oh, wow. So, you know, I was always surrounded by people who were so passionate about what they did. Yeah. I was like, I have to stick to this. Um, again, actually, I can add to that list was working at Centum under um, James Moria. Yeah. This, he will come into the office with energy <laughs> and psych for life yeah. every morning. And yeah. for me, it was like I'm dragging myself to work. Yeah. So that's when I first initially thought about it. And I was like, you know, I want to be like him getting up yeah. and like jumping up to go to work. Yeah. So um, through the challenges in the first, uh, second and third year, you had to keep reminding yourself it's going to you're gonna pull through, you're gonna be okay. Yeah. You know, it's very difficult. I'm very passionate about talking about, um, especially mothers mm -hmm. pursuing their dreams mm -hmm. and what they love to do yeah. because a lot of people put, make you feel like you're selfish for chasing your passion. Yeah. In my case, they say, you know, you're selfish because you're not gonna give your child what they need. Of course, I went through, I talk about openly how I couldn't mm -hmm. afford school for my son, so mm -hmm. I homeschooled him. Mm -hmm. At times, I couldn't afford, you know, basic things as meals or clothes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember my son wearing clothes that were worn out mm -hmm. within that three years because I couldn't afford anything. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're starting a business, building it up, trying to build a name, I had to do a lot of free jobs mm -hmm. for people to see my work mm -hmm. and build a portfolio. So I'm passionate about letting women know that it's okay. Sometimes you have to go through those sacrifices. And if you're open to your children and talk to them and guide them and let them know this is a process you're going through. Yeah. Like now when things are good, my son is very proud to share my story with other yeah. kids. He's yeah. like, you don't know where my mom has come from. You, you know yeah. what I mean? So he's yeah. been part of the journey. Yeah. Yeah. And they get to see what it means to be passionate about what and how to pull through. Yeah. I just feel like in this day and age where the microwave age, mm -hmm. the age of you know American Idol. Factor overnight success, yes. yeah. So people miss out the fact that you're gonna have to suffer <laughs> to prove your point mm -hmm. to other people. Sometimes, I mean, sometimes you have a lucky break, mm -hmm. but in this case, where makeup was something so foreign to Kenyans, mm -hmm. like so foreign when I say foreign, it's most Kenyan women are happy being natural, and I love that about our country. I love yeah. that our women are so confident in yeah. their natural skin, yeah, they're not dependent on makeup and mm -hmm. whatnot. So I come in with a message that you know you can actually enhance this beauty. Yeah. You can take it to another level. Yeah. You can, um, you know, in the workplace I saw working in corporate how much impact it had when not only was I dressed right mm -hmm. but my face looked right. Yeah. You know, I was then you you're given more opportunities. I called in for you know hosting meetings, whatnot, this and that because you're the full package. Yeah. So even in a lot of my trainings for corporate, I'm constantly explaining the impact of just taking that extra few minutes in the morning yeah. <laughs> to groom yourself. Yeah. Um, it communicates to your clients that you take time and your and effort to yeah. make yourself up because yeah. you take your work seriously. Yeah. So presentation is everything. Yeah. And let's face it, right now when you're sitting in an interview or even talking, mm -hmm. where am I looking the most? <laughs> you know, a lot of people say the shoes tell you a lot about a person. I agree. But you know, when you look at somebody, yeah, yeah you know, most of the time you're speaking to them. Yeah. yeah. I tell my brides, nobody will remember your dress. Yeah. You know, you spend months and months saying, I want this bead here, yeah. I want this job here, <laughs> I want this detail here. Yeah. Ask anybody after the wedding they remember what your dress looked like they don't yeah. but they remember she had too much makeup she had yeah. too much blush yeah. she, you know makeup was cakey or the makeup was natural and beautiful yeah because they're looking at your face yes. the whole time yeah. so it's such an impact it does yeah it's thanks to people like you who are following their passion yeah. and, and showing that it's possible to do work that you absolutely love and make a living off it yes yeah but I, I guess one of the challenges of being a creative professional is determining how to price your product mm -hmm. as you think about monetizing and making a living and, and being able to sustain yourself. Yeah. What are some of the things or the factors you've looked at to be able to say, I'm going to charge this much for the work that I do? Okay. And I know it might vary from different professions, Definitely. but I guess for yours, what, you know, what are some of the this, factors? This one was 
tricky because I, I explained, okay, so when I graduated from university, moved home within that year before my son was born mm -hmm. I interned as a makeup artist and a, a makeup artist who was very successful at the time Hassan mm -hmm. but he passed away a few years ago he was incredible because he was big on giving makeup artists opportunities so through understanding and working with him I sort of knew what the market rate was then in the country you know whether it's you're charging five thousand six thousand seven thousand he sort of set the benchmark. I think at the time actually there were probably about three or four makeup artists in the country. So it really was up to them to, to decide, to decide how, to. how much you're, you're charging. Um, so I interned with him and at that point I was like, I'm just so passionate, I'll do it for anything. You know, I'm still living with my parents, it's okay, I could work for free. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then when I started working at Centre, that two years, every weekend I'll try to book a bride. So I sort of then decided to go with the rates that he had given me an idea of. Um, but I knew once I leave to do this full time, I need to make sense of it mm -hmm. financially mm -hmm. um, and actually set a standard that, that hopefully would set a high bar for the rest of the makeup artists so that if anybody wants to be a makeup artist in Kenya, it's actually sustainable and you can live off it. Um, so what I did, the first two years, I'm telling you the, num the number of free jobs I did, kind of countless, I did so many free jobs only because I didn't want to take peanuts. Because once you say, I'll charge a thousand shillings, mm -hmm. and then the next client who is referred to by that person says, just talk to her nicely, she'll do a thousand more. Yeah. But you know you really want to charge maybe five thousand. Mm -hmm. Then you get stuck at one thousand. Mm -hmm. So I knew, let me do a lot of free jobs. People love the work, so when they actually come back and say, now we're ready to pay, or we would like to pay, then I can price it. Mm -hmm. And they see the value of what they're getting because they've seen the work. Mm -hmm. And also, you've had time to build a name. So it took a lot of sacrifice on my end, yeah? yeah. Uh, I, always, I always say, I don't know how I did it, but it's not funny when you, you're living in a house, no running water, and you know, you're thinking, where am I getting a meal for my son? You know, yeah. At that point, my family, um, my, some of my family didn't understand also what I'm doing, you know? And um, so even being supportive was difficult for them because they didn't know what this makeup and this thing you're on about. Um, so in my third year of makeup, I then uh, was very, very blessed to have an opportunity to go to school in London at the Academy of Freelance Makeup. Uh, my father finally came around, he understood, okay, she's not budging, <laughs> she's not looking for an office job, <laughs> she's, she's sticking doing. to this, so yeah. let's support her. <laughs> yeah. So he um, sponsored my, my school fees, I saved up, threw myself there, you know, crashed with some friends who from high school and stuff and I went to school. So when I came back, I came back with confidence because I was like, I have this certificate, mm -hmm. I've done this training, now I can up my rates, yeah? Just the same way in corporate, if you come in with a degree and you go back and do a master's and MBA, you can come back and negotiate more with your boss. Mm -hmm. So I did that. Mm -hmm. So that was in my third year. And then in my fifth year, I went back to school again. This time I did an advanced certificate before I did a basic one. Mm -hmm. So when I did the advanced certificate, then I hiked my prices up again. Now, I'm basing it on the fact that one, the skill is enhancing. I'm investing in my skill. So I'm gonna price it higher because I have better skills from the training. Mm -hmm. Number two, I'm exposing myself to the most advanced and most up-to-date product. Mm -hmm. Exposing myself to it, but also investing in it. Yeah. So I can price it in a way that doesn't break back when I need to buy these foundations. I have to have in a variety of color mm -hmm. um, and have a variety of types for your skin types. You know what I mean? And three is how well known is your name. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's another another <laughs> uh, element, yeah, element in, in building your brand and yeah. whatnot. You know, how much can you put up on there? Now, some people may say your prices are ridiculous, but then what I do do is I actually look at where we've come from back in 2006 when I was interning with Hassan. Mm -hmm. I also look at the rates within Africa. Mm -hmm. I look at the rates around the world, mm -hmm. you know, and then you're able to sort of have an idea based on living in the, you know, the commune and whatnot, mm -hmm. how you're able to price it and this and that. So really it comes from there. And it, that's why I guess I had to engage the business side because being an artist, you know, it's very easy for us to you're be like, like oh, whatever. <laughs> Yeah. You know, you forget, but yeah. Um, yeah, so I've had some, I've had to sit down and actually work on those numbers and, and make it something that I can live off. And again, being a single parent, I want to be able to provide my son with a good lifestyle, mm -hmm. not just getting by hand to mouth, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And you mentioned something so important about education, because I think a lot of people assume that 
when you work in the creative industry, you, you're just, like you said, you're not intelligent. Or yeah. You have, you know, you're not smart enough. That's how you're doing a creative career. But there's a lot of like work and there's, you know, there's a theory aspect as well as, mm -hmm. as, a, as a practical mm -hmm. skills. I tell you one thing, like um, education is everything. And that's one thing my dad always said to me brother and I that you know regardless of whatever you guys do, choose to do with your life when it comes to education I'm happy to um, fund or help and support um, and so within my first three years I was like yeah I'm self-taught self-taught and I really wanted to take all that credit for my self-taught skill you know yeah. and then I realized if, if you're gonna be self-taught then that's as much as you know mm -hmm. the next having the next platform I have to go on to learn is YouTube mm -hmm. okay yeah. YouTube is fantastic but YouTube makeup is not for everything it's not going to feed into high fashion makeup it's not going to feed into this is a certain style and you know um skill that youtube makeup has so basically i then decided why not um go to school and actually make it as professional as any other industry i'm going to be in mm -hmm. uh, one when people see that you invest in your skills and they, they're also more confident in you yeah Number two, I get to network with makeup artists from around the world. The school I went to, we had makeup artists fly in from all over the world to teach us. People who have worked on Rihanna, people who have worked on J Lo. Yeah. I mean, these are people who you're just like, you see their makeup and you're like, wow, who's behind the work? Yeah. And then they're in class teaching you and showing you the skills. Yeah. Um, so going to school is a huge part of it. I would say, even my, in my two years in corporate, I have no regrets about that. Mm -hmm. uh, I tell makeup artists, people want to be makeup artists because I do visit a lot of schools for careers days and whatnot. Yeah. I say to them, get your degree for sure. Mm -hmm. Put your parents at least. <laughs> <laughs> get a degree or yeah. your diploma. Yeah. And then from there, get at least one or two years work experience in corporate. Because yeah. corporate will give you the discipline, will give you um, other lessons like just and to get everything business-wise, yeah. professionalism, everything that yeah. you're going to learn and then you're going to lead and feed it into your business. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not easy, it's tough, especially when you're in an office and you have to deal with different characters, mm -hmm. you have to deal with different mood swings, <laughs> you don't know who is coming to the office with what, Which day. Um, yeah. you know, different challenges, timelines, meeting deadlines, all that mm -hmm. is going to help you when you're running your business, you yeah. know? Yeah. yeah, so it's crucial. It is yeah, crucial, okay. it is crucial. You have to challenge yourself because as an artist, you know, it's very easy for us to sit back and just be like, I'm an artist. I'm an artist, that's But it. not in this day and age. No. Not in this day and age when anybody can build a business online. Mm -hmm. We no longer have to pay for a billboard mm -hmm. or pay for advertising space on television. I can go on Instagram and start something mm -hmm. and actually make money from it. Yeah. So if you're not challenging yourself and giving yourself those extra skills, yeah. then you're basically just, yeah. You're not gonna go as far as you can. Yeah. Yeah. You built uh, an amazing online brand. Thank a you. lot of people have known you and seen probably your, your work online first. Yeah. Before they met you or yeah. heard about your work. So, what has what's the importance of having a digital footprint, a strong digital footprint to the work that you do? You know, I'll go back to my Centum days. They were rebranding from ICDCI to Centum. So as they were rebranding, we had to work with the company quite closely to understand the rebranding process mm -hmm. and emotionally what people um, feel when they see a certain brand mm -hmm. and how they attach themselves to it. Mm -hmm. You know, why is it that Airtel could give better deals but we're still stuck on Safaricom? Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. that emotional attachment. Yeah. Why, would you, yeah. <laughs> why would you do it? Do you know? And you know, Airtel, maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe. Yeah. I'm still with Safaricom. But like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you never know. <laughs> So it was very interesting and fascinating to me. So when I left Centum, I knew straight away that the first thing I would need is online presence, either through Facebook page, which I started, and then um, a friend from church stumbled across it and said, listen, come in for a meeting, we tell you that how to manage your Facebook page. So when I did that, they were like, why don't you do a good web website, mm -hmm. a creative website? And I was very shy when I first started. So I said, as long as the website doesn't have any pictures of me, let it be about the work. I want people to know about the work. Um, so we did this brilliant website and within a year people had been going on it they were like wow this is such a professional presentation of a makeup artist like yeah. you know it, it looked even better than other corporate sites yeah. um, and then you know it just went on from there so what what I realized was the impact of giving people the knowledge because on my first website I had a blog so I used to write about different makeup products 
different makeup brands. This is good product, this is not. This is fake, this is real. Yeah. And so when people start to affiliate you as an expert in the field, then they come to your page more and more, mm -hmm. which is what happened. And then if your pictures are beautiful, mm -hmm. if you call a photographer and say, let's collaborate, let's get a model and we all do the work at no cost, but we can all use the images on our platforms, mm -hmm. that's another way to showcase your work really well. So mm -hmm. as long as the, the images were beautiful, um, the expertise was there, people were coming to learn. Sharing the knowledge is so important because when you're doing that, you're actually telling people you're confident in what you do yes. and you're okay with giving out the skill. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they can trust you. They can trust you. Yeah. So that was a big role to play. And then I had that website for about three, four years. So this, at this point, I was only using my website and I was using Facebook. And then Instagram came along. Actually, Twitter. And I never got to it until today. I just I don't understand <laughs> it. Like I just don't get it. So I, I, Twitter is where it's at. You know what I mean? A lot of people tell me that. But I just link it to my Facebook. Thank God. So <laughs> everything that goes on my Facebook goes on my on my Twitter. Yeah. Uh, and then Instagram came along, which I absolutely fell in love with because that was just it was just images. Yeah. Beautiful laid images. Little quotes or whatever you want to do. Sometimes I do write a lot. Yeah. But um, I started on there. So I got myself my Instagram page started and then started posting pictures on there. I had no clue. I don't think anybody knew what social media was going to do for all of us. No, you know what I mean? No, like no. <laughs> nobody had nobody. an idea. Okay. Um, and just from there, the numbers started growing, people asking questions, people engaging, you getting jobs because somebody stumbled on your Instagram account. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just blown away. So by that point, I was like, okay, let me create a website that tells people about who Mubani is mm -hmm. and what I'm about. Mm -hmm. So that was in my fourth year, I believe, fourth, fifth year, I, I re did my website and I actually had an about page where you actually saw who the makeup artist was. And I used to love going out and meeting people and then they say, what do you do? And I say, I'm a makeup artist. And then you say your name and then they're like, oh my God, I know your work. Yeah. That to me was the, everything. Yeah. I didn't care for them to know me. I yeah. wanted them to know the work. Yeah. So this time I had an about page and then I started to realize that there was a trend online. People, rather corporates were investing in individual brands, mm -hmm. basically the individual. They were interested in the person. Mm -hmm. So if it was a blogger, they were saying, okay, how much can we pay you to talk about this and this and this? Yeah. Or if you know, you're know you a stylist or a photographer, they were now engaging them on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Mm -hmm. So that was why it was important for me to now put myself out there. And I thank God because a year later, maybe came, <laughs> came <in>. along yeah. <laughs> and I became the brand ambassador. Yeah. yeah. So it's been an important component of growing your brand and just being online and visible. Yes. Yeah. And we have to ask you, Insta story or Snapchat? Oh, man, <laughs> like you call me at a tough time. <laughs> Listen, I have been addicted to Snapchat for about, let's say, two years now, mm -hmm. properly. Mm -hmm. Religiously, and then Insta story came in and just threw my life upside down. Basically, I am actually, and I'll, I'll say this openly when I post something on Snapchat, um, if I get X amount of views, I'm actually getting triple the amount on Insta story. Yeah. And so, for me, it's making sense to be on Instagram and Insta story because yeah. then it's a one stop shop. Yeah. You, you don't need to I mean? have two separate accounts. And I feel like psychologically there's something going on with that little round circle that lights up yeah. that makes people randomly <laughs> hit it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm seeing the impact from Insta story and Instagram. My Snapchat was heavily loaded mm -hmm. and I had to delete it on Friday. So like <laughs> three days ago. Yeah. And I've just not come around to putting it back on because of how efficient Snap is just Insta to story is. On one, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I do miss the filters, yeah. but then again, this is another thing. You get addicted to those filters. Mm -hmm. So you end up selling an image that is possibly just mm -hmm. not your work or filtered and this and that. And then you get back on Insta story and you're like, okay, not not use. Isn't it funny how psychologically all these you things just mess about with you? <laughs> so yeah, I'm at that point where I'm like, mm. yeah. Yeah. I'll get back on the people. snap because yeah. I, I love my snap fam. They yeah. have been incredible in giving me feedback and yeah. talking to me about what topics to share on YouTube. Yeah. In just you know being uplifting, encouraging on my especially when I'm traveling, mm -hmm. you know working wherever around the world I am and taking them along that journey. Just the journey. Yeah, but yeah. I hope my snap back to Instagram. <laughs> <Instagram. laughs> I'm one of those people who's caught a feeling. Like, I feel like Instagram has stolen, you know, like yeah. the 
the unique idea and I just you know I'm I'm, I'm still hanging on to are you, are you are you both but I think Snapchat is a lot more intimate. In it is. I, I will tell you this. I will yeah. tell you this. On Snapchat, I wouldn't mind if I went out to party and I was yes. out with girls. I'll be yes. snapping and I don't yeah. care. Yeah. But Insta story, I feel like it's a bit more formal. Yeah. I, I do filter a bit more what I put on there. You're right. Yeah. You're so right. I guess there's a difference, and maybe yeah. maybe both of them will survive. But I'll really be sad if. What's if the Snapchat impact? What have you seen in terms of happening? What? I mean, I, I don't know the figure. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. For me, it's just like a personal perspective yeah, okay, okay. that I just find Snapchat more private. I use it just more for like, I guess, more of me. Isn't it funny? You feel like it's friends and it's, family it's, with Snapchat. Honestly, it's And then friends. Instagram is formalities. Like, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's like, okay, you know, what you want people to see of you. You're like, you can look at this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but that's been great. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah it's been a great conversation. <laughs> we can't wait to see you at Matchment Time. I'm looking forward to yeah. it. You know, I'm so excited about one thing I'm huge on is, again, sharing the knowledge, giving back information, and really just connecting with people who are like, this is what I want to do, but I don't know how to go about doing it. The yeah. biggest thing I always say is that regardless of whatever it is that you want to do never make an excuse of something I could have said oh I'm a single mom I need to feed my child I'm gonna stay in corporate mm -hmm. you know I could have used many excuses mm -hmm. um, I think the biggest thing is just getting up and doing it so what you're doing providing a platform on which we can come and share about yo I struggled my first you know yeah. first second third year mm -hmm. You know, wearing shoes until they're they're worn out. <laughs> <laughs> and knowing that you've been working hard, you know, situation. And just letting people know that there are those challenges. And you know, you also face a lot of challenges with people who you thought will support you, mm -hmm. but will not support you. Yeah. And it shocks you. It's a shock to the system. You know. Mm -hmm. um, so platforms like this allow people to know that. You're very normal. Mm -hmm. Those challenges are there. <laughs> yeah. You go through some hateration. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Part of the journey. The people will come through and pull through for you, will shock you, and will pull you through like amazing. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's so fulfilling. I'm in my eighth year of being a makeup artist, yeah. and I could not imagine living another life. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and it's just the beginning, really. Yes. 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 <laughs> yeah. It is so much, Mudoni. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. I'm yeah. excited. <laughs>